welcome to the Film Garage 208 podcast. My name is Sarah and this is Daniel. Hello. Hello. Today we have Kenny Jenkins with us from Oracle Tattoo. Hello. Hello. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having us. Yeah. So we want to learn all about you. How did you get into the tattoo business? So I was a teenager when I first ever walked into a tattoo shop. Yeah. Um, How old? 15. Okay. I was, my cousins just were getting tattooed all the time, so I was down there hanging out with them. The first time I ever walked in, I just knew. Like, You're just like, this is I walked it. in, I'm like, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. How? I don't know. Why? I don't know. It's just, that's what I want to do. Like, I grew up around, like, my dad had some tattoos when I was growing up, just old Navy tattoos. They got super young. But, like, growing up, seeing those, seeing my cousins get tattooed all the time, and just so fascinated and knowing like that you can make a career mm-hmm. yeah. like doing art. Were and you an artist still, at that point? Like, could yeah, you draw? On? I was always drawn from like a very young age. And so I was like, Oh, like what? Like you could actually do this and like make money on and this. Draw like, people. Cause at the time there was like, I think that was the only tattoo shop in town. Like and that was when you were 15 here yeah. at Idaho Falls. There might've been, there was two shops, but like, what was, was the name of that shop? Um, I don't Are remember. they still around? No. No. No, that's long gone. But um, yeah, at the time it was just crazy because tattooing was very taboo. Yeah. It was yeah. very, very taboo back then. Like, Especially no, here in this no, conservative very, town. Seriously, it still, very, still kind of is. It still is. It's getting a lot better. Yeah. yeah. Like the last like five years or so has definitely changed. For sure. And back then, like turned 18, got tattooed for the first time. And started sleeves. So by 19, I already have both my sleeves done. That's awesome. And like knowing though, like how taboo it was that like I was setting myself up that I had no choice but to learn to tattoo. This like is to my find my way now. into <laughs> this industry. Yeah. That there's no other option. Like you have to commit. Yeah, that was, you know. Yeah. Like a tattoo's already a commitment in general, but like <laughs> tattooing your yeah. arms that much, it's like I was wearing long sleeves to every job I had. Like I had to hide them. Right. Like family was upset. Yeah. Jobs were like, no, dude, you can't. You so can't dress what, like this. What when, jobs were you doing yeah. in the meantime until um, you got like to tattooing? Let's see. Some telemarketing jobs and then I worked at the railroad right before I got my apprenticeship. Okay. So, so even at a telemarketing job, they wouldn't let you have yeah, tattoos. Yeah, you would think. You like, would think that'd be the place for you to work. Like, not then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they long sleeve shirts. Uh-huh. They're like, nope, dude, you got to cover that. I'm like, okay. Obviously now you do your own thing, but did you notice yeah. that ever changing towards the end of your... I've noticed like... Time doing other jobs? No, it's still it was, the same. So this yeah. is 20 years ago. So you think if you were still out right now trying to get a job, they'd say wear long sleeves and... Oh, guaranteed. Yeah. Yeah. Like... It's interesting because like yeah. when we lived in Hawaii, that was really eye opening for me because moving from Boise there, oh, yeah. um, the tattoo situation was like what you're saying. Just no one really had it there. It's kind of taboo. And in Hawaii, everyone has it. And yeah. a lot of military like are there. Culture, so. It's culture. It's culture. Yeah. It's always yeah. been culture. And it's, mm-hmm. it's so interesting when you change your like perception on it. And it's, I don't know, it's just more accepted. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's like, why is this considered taboo to some people? Or nonetheless, a job controlling your life yeah. over yeah. these aspects. But yeah, because to me, it's like, it doesn't, tattoos don't change who you are as a person just because right. you have a tattoo. Because like, when I first started a tattoo, it was still like very, you were looked at as a criminal or this or that, like mm-hmm. you've been to prison or anything. And I'm like, but everybody I met that was heavily tattooed back then were the kindest, nicest people you ever meet. Yeah, like yeah. the cool like people. It didn't, it didn't change who they were as a yeah. person. Uh-huh. And so it always like bothered me. But seeing things now, it's like, Hundred percent different. Uh huh. Hundred percent different. Yeah, I feel like it's looked at in a more fun, creative way, and not yeah, not that what yeah. it used to be. Like it's we, definitely like you said, the last five years. There's been a big culture shift. Yeah, well, it's been happening for like fifteen years now, but yeah. like the last five have definitely been a big shift of like we don't care. Yeah. So, did you ever tattoo anywhere else, or have you done all of your work so, here? No, I started my apprenticeship here in Idaho knowing we were moving shops to Utah in a few months. Oh. So moved to Utah. I was there for six, seven years, I think, give or take, and then came back to Idaho because I was born and raised here. Mm-hmm. So it's just time to come back home. And I worked here for, worked a shop here for 12 years, and then we opened our own shop. 
Gotcha. So Oracle Tattoo is your your yep. baby. Yep. That's cool. Yeah, we opened up a year and a half ago. Oh, really yeah. new then. Nice. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. That's really exciting. Yeah. yeah. But I've been tattooing for 18 years now, so. So I want to go to your apprenticeship. Yeah. Okay. So how do you get that? Where? What do you do? <laughs> <laughs> There's many different ways. Yeah. Um, the way I got into mine, like, I started hitting on tattoo shops at 15 mm -hmm. and just never left. Yeah. Like, I was bugging them every day for six years until, fine, fine, kid. Like, That's we'll, funny. we'll teach you how to tattoo, yeah. you know? But it was like, the way I see it coming in, like, no one ever told you how. And it, it's still very the same. Yeah. No one tells you, like, oh, this is how you get an apprenticeship. Because there's not just one way. Mm -hmm. um, the best way to like, get an apprenticeship really is just, find an artist you like that you get along with because you're going to spend a lot of time with that person. Um, and that's pretty much what I did. Like I was at the shop every day doing all the chores, helping around the shop as much as I could, um, helping clients, helping the artists do whatever they needed to do, keep the shop looking clean until they found like, find it, we'll teach you how to tattoo. Give you a like, chance. Because it's something like, especially back then, like you didn't pay for an apprenticeship. Like, you were lucky to get one. Like probably. You just, yeah, it was very it was like, time. why would we teach you how to do this? 100%. Like, like these already, are my clients. Why am I going to tell yeah, you like, how why to? Why would I teach I you see. how to? Why would I like uh, teach my own replacement? Sure. Yeah. For sure. And so like, I know way back when it was like that, you didn't get an apprenticeship unless like the artist was like about to retire or die. Hmm. Like, he was like 50, 60 years old. He's like, okay, I'll teach someone else now to carry on this tradition. Huh. Interesting. Because at that point it wasn't, it was carrying on a legacy, not creating like a replacement. Yeah, I see. And so nowadays hmm. it's different too. Like, I think you should still like earn your apprenticeship and like work for it. Cause like, yeah, you spend a lot of time with these people. They're teaching you a trade for free. Yeah. So like, what do they just tell you what they're doing as they're tattooing on someone or? It's a lot of, yeah. Yeah. Like, you have like fake skin you practice on. There is now, but <laughs> and then, then, no. No, like, <laughs> pressure was on. Yeah. Like we tattooed fruit and then you could tattoo pig skin because that's like the closest thing to human skin. I heard skin. that. Um, but I never tattooed the pig skin. I just tattooed some fruit and then, all right, dude, like, let's go find you some clients. So let's, <laughs> let's do some free tattoos on people. Mm -hmm. What was your first tattoo um, on someone else? On someone else, it was a little voodoo doll on one of my buddies. Was it good? Yeah. <laughs> it was good for like back then yeah. for like what I was doing I was like cause it's still solid now 20 years later it's like yeah. oh damn dude like that's you still got it wow that's still there <laughs> <laughs> that's still pretty solid in there I put it in there that's, that's awesome that's no lie that's probably fun to see people come back after a long time and yeah, see your work it really is he's one of my good buddies so I still think of all the time for letting me do that cause it's a big commitment too hey dude I don't know what I'm doing yeah. Literally, let me, first let me tattoo two. you. You know, like I mean, I've had like barbers that scares me when they're like, yeah, I exactly. just got that's certified, and that's terrifying. I can't even imagine. Yeah, a tattoo. they've already done like how many free hair. What do you give discounts for that? Or yeah, so like the first little them. few tattoos you do, you're just doing them for free, and then you're doing them at like discounted rate for a while till everything's like all the kinks are worked out. But like it's still a constantly learning every day. I'm sure. But even like, back then, it's more nerve wracking because it's like. <laughs> And you were oh, 18 or 19? I was 21. Okay. okay. Yeah. Still a young guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Super young. Super young. Uh-huh. Yeah. Looking back, I'm like, man, like, because it's still nerve wracking thinking about it. It's like, you have to like, take away the the thought process of this is permanent. Anything like. That's all I would be thinking about. If I pull about. this line and get shaky, <laughs> like that line ain't going to be straight. It's going to look like a little zigzag. It's like, oh. And then immediately and then happens. Becomes, yeah. And then you start becoming shaky and you have to oh, like no. learn to control those emotions and control Like trusting your body. yourself. Yeah. It's all big trust for yeah. everything. Yeah. So you can't wild. erase it. Start shaking. You're like, all right, take over, take over. Yeah, like, no, 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 no. No idea. Like, yeah. And then just try and calm your nerves. Like, no, it's fine. Like they know, they yeah. know it's free. They, know, they, they know I'm not, I don't know what I'm doing in this moment. Like uh -huh. yeah. back when, you know, they signed up for this. They deserve everything they get. Yeah. Yeah. So do you feel like that collaboration of like learning how to, or be doing your apprenticeship, has it changed now? Are people more open or is it still pretty like dog eat dog? Oh, uh -huh. like no one wants to share their secrets. Yeah. No, it's still very close off. It is. 
like more people are taking on apprenticeships to some extent, but it's always been very, um, what's the word? Gate kept. There we go. Do styles mm. translate? Like you obviously have your own style of tattooing. Yeah. Can you teach that specific style to someone and they'd be like just as good at it? Or is it just like, yes. Do, yeah, it's possible. So yeah. you could have, technically train your whole Oracle tattoo to have like the same style if you, need. Yeah. If you wanted to. Yeah. So it really huh. depends on like the people you bring in and mm -hmm. like what style of tattoos that they want to do. And so that's a very open-ended question in that way too. <laughs> like, for sure, it depends on what they want. Yeah, yeah. Like if if we're gonna apprentice someone new type thing, yeah. like, well, what kind of like, and that's the whole part of the interview process of an apprenticeship too. Like, what kind of art do you like to do? Like, where do you see your, like, what kind of like tattoos are you wanting to do? Yeah. That way, like, we can make sure we're a good fit as well. Gotcha. To teach you like that, because there's certain styles I don't do, and yeah. so I'm not gonna be the best mentor. If you're like wanting to learn this or that, and I'm like, yo, I don't tattoo that way. So I'm not going to be able to teach you mm -hmm. any of that. This isn't going to work. Yeah. You could so, teach the basic, like what to do with a needle and yeah, whatnot. Like you could but, teach the very generic yeah. basics, but this, but I wouldn't skills. want to teach someone to like send them off somewhere else. Right. Sure. Yeah. Like, so with everyone in your shop right now, have they, how did you... Get them. So it's just me and my wife. Oh, it's just you two? Yeah. Okay. Um, and she's been apprenticing for a year and a half. A oh. Year? We have Josie in the background. She's oh, yeah. not on the yeah. podcast, Josie but she's here. It's here. <laughs> so she's been apprenticing for about a year now. Okay. Um, but came into it wanting to do the same style of tattooing that I do. Mm -hmm. And so that's worked out very wonderful in the sense of like, teach her how to draw the right way to, to, for these tattoos. Cause like anybody, like there's all these people out in the world that can draw, but not everybody can draw. Not everybody that can draw can tattoo. Yeah. Cause yeah. like the way tattoos work, everything has like rules that we have to abide by. And you're hmm. drawing on like 3d too, like yeah. bending parts yeah. and stuff. Like, and Cause there's things you can draw on paper that we can't tattoo. Like it just won't translate over it won't hold up over time. And the way I was taught with it too is like, if it's not going to look good in five, 10 years, then just don't do it. Hmm. Like if it's going to look good for a picture, whatever, but you want this to look good 10 years down the road. Like, and you'll you know from to, the drawing, like just seeing the photo itself, you're like, that's not going to look good. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's a lot of tiny little basic rules that I just know like off the back of my, like, just one of those things you just know at this point. From now, experience. From experience over the years. And so like apprenticing Josie and like have to like re-break these rules down. <laughs> You're like, like probably relearning things you didn't I'm even know you knew. I'm things on my own and like relearning how to like, explain things that like were never truly explained to me. It's just figure it out right. on your own because that's how my apprenticeship went. Uh -huh. Yeah. It was very watch what I do and do what I do. But as they're tattooing still like using their stretch hand like this and covering what they're doing. So I can't fully see. Yeah. And that goes back to the whole gatekeeping thing or telling me things hmm. like, Oh, do it like this. And then watch them do something completely different. I'm like, what, why'd you tell me to do it like this? And you're doing it like this. And they're like, I don't know. They probably haven't even like, thought of that. You well, know, no, like they were just, they don't want to teach you. They're just like, messing with you a little like bit. They're purposely like almost trying to like derail you. What? Right off the get go. Cause they don't want you to be better than them. Yeah. And replace no, them. I, I see that. I do see. Hmm. Like, I don't think things are that much like that anymore. Like at least when I came into it, that's how yeah. it was for a little while still very, um, they teach you enough and then you just figure it out on your own. Cause that's how yeah. they were taught. Mm -hmm. Like they were taught to like, that makes sense. Bare minimum basics. And then, yeah. But that's not what Josie's getting. No. <laughs> so when you do these things, are you like writing these down to have like a process for if you were to train someone else again or? No. You know, yeah, you don't, <laughs> you don't want secrets. that. Yeah. yeah. Those are secrets. That's gold. Those are secrets. <laughs> Million dollars. But even then, like, it's just like any one-on-one -on -one with teaching, like, the, I've had to relearn, I've had to learn how to teach. Like, I had no idea, <laughs> you know? It's almost like raising kids. Like we got four kids. I'm like, and I have to talk to each one of them very differently. And it's just so How crazy. How old are they? 
19, 14, and two five-year-olds. Oh, wow. Yeah. Very different so conversations. Very, very like, it don't matter. Like, we could talk to one this way and talk to this, the other one the exact same way, and it won't click to yeah. one of them. Mm-hmm. And so teaching has been the same way of, like, learning how to tell her something. It's like, she's like, I don't get that. And I'm like, okay. And go back through it in my own head. I'm like, okay, like, how... Yeah. Do I process this out? Right. And then like eventually it clicks. It's like, oh yeah, that I'm like, okay, now we understand. So it's it was a slow learning process for both of us. It's like finding out how she works also so that you know yeah. how to best communicate. Yeah. Cause like we already yeah. knew well like how we work together and communicate, but it's just like the teacher apprentice aspect of like or teacher student aspect of like, um, how do I and there's Say probably a lot right. of jargon and terms that oh, like you use that she's yeah. like right over her head every Even time. Like, yeah. From like when she first started like working at the shop with me and then started apprenticing, I'd be saying the same thing all the time. And now like a year and a half later, it's like, oh, now I understand what you're talking about. Like once you start tattooing and certain little things change, it's like, now I understand what you were telling me and trying to beat my head all this mm-hmm. time. That like wouldn't like necessarily click like it did, but not. So it's like making you think different. Oh, very, yeah. very like, what? It like, probably makes you question things that maybe you have done. Like, oh, like why did I do this for time. so many ways? And all I know, the time, I know when we first started opening the studio here and doing more stuff, where like t- Sarah started helping on the technical side, and I would say things and or have a, a certain way I would do something, and she would help me with it once and be like, "Why are you doing that?" And I'm like, "I don't, I don't know." I just, it just seems right. I just, everyone always said to do it this way, but I guess we really don't have to. So <laughs> that's, not that's what I guess, sure, like, let's just change it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of things we've changed that way. She's like, I think we should run things this way. I'm like, okay. That I've been running things a lot this, of this way yeah. for all these years and it's not really, it works, but does it work that well? It helps to know. have fresh eyes. Very much so. Yeah. yeah. Business wise, have some fresh eyes. So were you at another location in town? Yeah, we were over on Channing for... About a year. Okay. And then we had an opportunity to move locations to a bigger spot Mm -hmm. and better parking and just better visibility. Yeah. We're like, okay, let's take this. But that was exciting. Were you ever at the Thompson tattoo? No. No? Nope. No. Okay. Yeah, no. I worked at the Bleeding Cowboy for 12 years. Mm -hmm. 12 years at the Bleeding Cowboy. When you switch places like that, do you bring clients with you? Yeah. Most of the time, like your clientele will just follow you wherever you go, like. Building a clientele, like, it's all about trust. Less about the space you're in yeah, and more it, about... like, your clients trust you, they'll follow you wherever you go. Unless you move, like, across country, like, out of state type thing. Mm-hmm. But even then, a lot of them will still follow you. You're just not going to see them as much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I'm sure. I mean, the all the tattoos your dad's gotten, there's a guy in Mexico that he loves. And yeah. he, like, only gets them from that guy when we go down there. and Wherever he's at, he finds them. Yeah, he's yeah. like, I'll wait until I can get that guy, even though there's... Because it, it is. It's all about the trust. Like yeah. You build a very strong bond with your artist. And if they do something on your own, they turn out better than I thought. And <laughs> you build that trust with mm-hmm. them, you'll stick to them no matter what. Yeah, I'm sure, especially with a big piece. Yeah. I mean, I only have tiny little tattoos, so nothing really... You have to put a lot of trust in people for yeah. it. It's but I can't trust. imagine <laughs> if I was doing like a big piece, I would be... Yeah, I need to know who you are, what you... <laughs> I need to see a lot of what examples. What do you stand for? Yeah. Like. <laughs> so you just opened your studio a year and a half ago. Yep. So challenges happen in every business. Yeah. Have you had any obstacles that you guys have had to work through when opening up your new shop? I think the only main obstacle was like... So the first place we were at, um, location was just not prime like we thought it would be like we're right on Channing like it's a busy street Mm -hmm. um the building we were in was um like a longer old medical building but the parking was horrible like we're in between we were like behind the main building so trying to park or even find us was kind of a weird nightmare and then there's a there was another medical supply store next to us so you would like pull down like this small hmm. alleyway, but it wasn't an alley. Yeah. And our parking, like you couldn't park. So it was just like I drive a truck and difficult. like I had to like. That sucks. I had to like 10 point park. Yeah. <laughs> it was like the Austin Powers of like trying to like do yeah. this. <laughs> that was me parking, like going to the shop every, every day, <laughs> every single day. And it was just like, man, this is horrible. Yeah. And we'd have clients like, dude, 
like Google Maps, Apple Maps, both of them just like didn't show it. where we were. Like they showed us like floating in like this other <laughs> You're more of building a behind us. Speakeasy yeah. tattoo shop. Oh, yeah. Man, like, and that's how it is sometimes. Like they'll find you. Like people will always find you, but it was like everybody complained about our parking spots. So like, dude, like I can't even park. I, I parked across the street at the hotel and walked over here on. Mm-hmm. Sweet, you know. I think I have an idea of where you're talking about. So yeah, that was. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a medical supply store right there on Chandler. Yeah, on that 25th. corner in the hotel across the street. Yeah, yeah. and then there was the there was a groomer up front uh-huh. in that building. We were behind them. I, I know that. Okay. So we yep. were tucked back there. I. Oh, that like sucks. Yeah, it's two really hidden, kind of right. Yeah. And like, no signage really. Like uh-huh. we had big windows with stickers on it, but you can't see it from the road. Uh-huh. No. And then. Our and that's a huge hundred. problem. That's, yeah. That sucks. Because even when people found us, they're like, where are you? I'm calling us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, that's dude, annoying. I'm, like, I'm in this that's building so back here. You're trying to tattoo, you're answering here. calls for yeah, directions. You can't. Yeah. You just can't do it. So that was the main MO looking for the oh, new location. Yeah. Was... Right. We need somewhere with better parking and, and yeah. just visibility in general. For sure. And we moved and nine day difference. Yeah. No one's ever like calling us. Hey, I can't find you. Yeah. They're like, they just show up. Are you getting more business from your new location yeah. too? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely busier. Great. Yeah. Like we were busy before, but it's definitely like from like street traffic a little bit. Yeah. Definitely more of a noticeable difference on like walk in traffic. Hmm. As before there was never like rare walk in traffic, like a lot of phone calls like traffic that way, but yeah. like actual people walking into the studio and And I feel like that's important for a tattoo shop. People kind of stop in, right? Yeah. Like that's what you do. I know Which, that's the times we've done it. Yeah, I've only yeah. just just gone in. Been like, what's your what's your basic rate for <laughs> yeah. something small and yeah, some flash tattoos. Yeah. So yeah, like stuff like that too. Yeah, like I think COVID changed that a little bit too. Oh yeah. Like prior to COVID, there wasn't a lot of private shops. You know, like everybody was still more just open shops, walk in, get what you want. I see. After COVID, things changed a little bit. I think, and a lot of more people went to private studios. And just cut the nonsense. So does everything. that mean like just like appointment only? Yeah, like appointment okay. only. Like I gotcha. don't just show up. Doors always locked. Gotcha. I see. And is that how your place is? No, no, no. Like we have a good mix. I feel like like we're not appointment only. You can just walk in, but we have rooms to keep the tattoo like more private. But you can still always just walk in whenever you want. Gotcha. If we're there. And that's how, I don't know, it's a good feel to me. It's probably nice not getting those phone calls anymore asking where you're at. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that was a little ridiculous sometimes because you're like, where the hell is my appointment? And then, bam, calling like, um, I can't find you. I'm like, you're great. Great. So great. how do you stand out at, as a business? I mean, the tattoo shop is self-explanatory. Yeah. You know, tattoos. Um, besides just like looking for someone in style, how do you? Do you do anything well, From special? your end, yeah. How do you stand out? Do you do marketing or ads or is it just word of mouth? It's always just been word of mouth. Yeah. Like I came into this industry, there was no social media. Like MySpace didn't even exist at that time <laughs> when I started tattooing. Mm-hmm. It came out shortly after and I never even hopped on that train. So like even trying to understand social media to me, I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> like all my clientele has always pretty much been word of mouth. Yeah. Like just building that rapport with clients and – a constant like just yeah like there was years i just didn't even post on social media like i just yeah whatever yeah Mm -hmm. i'm still busy like there's no point to post yeah so you don't care like you don't have an interest in posting on socials you're busy enough that's a amazing problem problem. (laughs) yeah that's fantastic like we we post now just to like stay relevant yeah Yeah. like we have the shop page we post on um a lot more than anything but it's just more to stay with the times and relevant yeah Mm -hmm. But it's never trying to trust the algorithm of like, oh man, like we got these all these likes or these comments. It don't like it doesn't matter. It doesn't anymore. translate to more money. It doesn't translate to more money for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Well, yeah. Why bother then? Really? I mean, besides just keeping people relevant a little bit. Yeah. But like, yeah, show your work here and there. Yeah, like we'll we'll post stuff here and there, but I don't. I'm never concerned with the the like content or the like count or the comments. But just so if people are trying to find us, however, which way they decide to, Mm because like knowing like that's how a lot of people find stuff nowadays is through social media. If they don't just use Google or those, like we have to stay relevant in that sense Mm -hmm. to help new clients find us or make up their mind. Because I know that's to me, that's how a lot of people do things now. 
they they want to look online and make sure Windows see what other people bit. are saying too as well to, to get their yeah own slight reassurance before taking that plunge yeah help their ego a little bit yeah and yeah put some put some things to ease and rest the nerves yeah yeah and getting a tattoo can be like stressful or nervous very like yeah it's permanent like we've mentioned many times already. have you had any tattoos that you're just like you regret doing on someone or turned out just not what you had hoped there's some things that always just kind of turn probably out, at the beginning like, yeah <laughs> definitely at the beginning of my yeah. career um like we're artists are always our own worst critic mm. so like we'll always just nitpick things but like yeah if i take a step back and look at it two three days later i'm like no that's actually really solid isn't that great how that is yeah like i love looking back at old work and music videos and stuff yeah. and we're like oh that like you know you just are like what things where i was in the edit it. like i'm gonna delete this this sucks and yeah. yeah and then you look it, back like, at it and i'm like okay that wasn't that bad yeah, yeah. Like, that's actually you give really it a few days cute. rest do a couple other things come back to you like, yeah okay, yeah no that was super solid yeah, yeah. <laughs> but i think that's the other thing too the headspace is, is learning to like learn from every little thing you do and take it on to the next piece 100 percent Always just take it on to the next of like, okay, yeah, like we can do it this way. Yeah, just the growth. I'm going to do this different next time. Besides people coming in with their own ideas, where do you find inspiration from? Do you travel or look at other accounts or? Yeah. Um, or has that just not been a problem for you? You've just kind of been going with what they bring you and your yeah. own creativity. And that's, I mean, that's enough. It's not like you have to yeah, find inspiration most of somewhere time else. You don't. Like, huh? I think that's. That's cool. That's a big strength to have. Like the craziest requests. <laughs> I do. We were just talking about this before we came in. Like, I do get some crazy requests sometimes. Like, I am that artist that, like, people will come at you. Like, know, areas to tattoo or? Just the project. <laughs> just ideas of what they want done. Yeah. Okay. Like, they'll come in wanting 20 different things in one tattoo that's, two inches by two inches and you're like I can't do this but I'm always very honest with people telling them what he can and can't do mm -hmm. in that sense too of like hey like this is way too much and like your focal points here and this is never going to look good as a giant it's always like trying to do that much stuff in one and it's always going to look just like a mess yeah but 99% of the time I'll give you what you want mm -hmm. like to some, some extent, crazy like, thing. we're going to have to talk, sit down. Like I'll sit and talk with people and explain like why we can't do 20 different names in a tattoo this big. Cause over time it's just not going to hold But Can up. you even write this on a piece of paper yourself? Like, yeah. <laughs> like really though. And so, but people come to us every day with some wild ideas and let me have a lot of creative freedom. That's nice. Cause they know that. Yeah. They'll bring me 10 different ideas that they want in one tattoo. And if most of the time they always let you do what you want to do yeah. to that extent, like, Hey, like I can't do it this big We all this stuff. We're going to have to make it yay big to incorporate all these ideas or incorporate a majority of these ideas and still look good. Cause the way I was taught to tattoo as well is like, you want to be able to read what that tattoo is from across the room okay. or like 10 feet away. Mm -hmm. You should still be able to see what that is and make sense of what it is and be legible. Um, so like when I started out, we worked, I worked in a street shop. Like there was no ever appointments. Okay. Like we had all walk-ins, all walk-ins, like flash racks on the wall, flash yeah. hanging on the wall, every which way. Yeah. And you had to tattoo every different style of tattoo. That was like pre-made for you. Yeah. To just like everything's just on the wall. There. Like, yeah. It's, We'd go to the back, no there's thinking. a line drawing for it. You'd find that line drawing, yeah. pop it on the printer, print it off, stencil uh -huh. it, put it on. Yeah. And yeah, back then, like, if someone walked in, it was very, you had to do it. It didn't matter what it was. You just did it. Unless you truly were not, like, could not tattoo that because of. Um, like your skill level. Yeah, or... Exactly. There we go. Thank you. Okay. The, the skill level of what we were trying to do. Yeah. And even then, we still pushed it push yourself out of those yeah. comfort zones a little to get it done. But back then it was definitely you do it or you don't eat. You mm -hmm. know, there's many days back then that you might only make 20 bucks in a day. 
yeah. that sucks. So, yeah, it was like it was dude, definitely... any tattoo, even a small one, takes a lot of time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was very rough back then. That's what I was saying. Like, tattooing was still very taboo there. Yeah. When I first came into it, like, I came into this knowing I can make a career out of it, but I wasn't ever going to, I'd survive one way or another. Yeah, you'll make it. On yeah. that note, with pricing, how do you base yourself? I just charge things by the piece. Um, I've done hourly in the past, and I feel like when you start doing hourly at times, you cut your own throat. Oh, yeah. Or you can. Okay. And also, I don't think it's the best for clientele if, because we might tell you, oh, it's going to take two, three hours. Well, that's a big price difference. If it like and goes if, over if a If they have bit. a budget, mm -hmm. yeah. you don't want them to have to go over their budget because I don't know what. Yeah. Like most, like everybody. Like, I see. That makes sense. We're all yeah. just trying to yeah. survive. And uh -huh. the tattooing is very much a luxury service. Okay. Like it's not, it's not a necessity. It's not food. It's not gas. It's not yeah. rent. It's you could just spend this money on something frivolous. Mm -hmm. So it's very much a luxury to get tattooed. So a lot of people are saving for it. Like they'll call to get quotes for things and mm. they put that money aside. So I like to be able to just give people a flat rate so they know ahead of time, like, hey, it's just this much and that's all you yeah. have to pay. Yeah. I get that. That that makes sense. I can see that. And yeah. usually like error on the side of being like a little bit higher, maybe just in case it does take the extra yeah. hour. So but they like I always tell them right from the get go, hey, this might take a little bit longer, but like, usually when I quote you, I'll, I'll quote a hair higher just to cover any of those bases that I'm yeah. not pushing them more than what we told them from the get go, so they're not worried. That's yeah. a way easier conversation to have than telling them after the fact, like, oh, you owe me five hundred or seven hundred dollars more, and they're like, what the, f yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I, it I definitely see that. happens. I do see that. Uh -huh. Like, like, trust me, you'll be happier with this too. Just it, it's worked out very well, huh? Like switch, like switching back to doing just flat rates. Is so you tried out. it so the alternative way for a second there. Yeah. Okay. Like I did hourly for a long time. Okay. And then we decided to switch back to doing it this way. Yeah. Because that's how I started tattooing. Is it was just always flat rate. Like hey, they'd pick something off the wall. It's like okay, yeah, it's that's how mine's been. Bucks. I just yeah. yeah, just pay him. Yeah. yeah. Like, mm -hmm. We just tell you like, hey, right off the bat, it's this. I'm not gonna say oh like, why well, charge this an hour? Well. Um, how many hours is it going to take? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, you know, it could take this. It could, it could a take slower. this. Yeah. You know, like you don't even want to start that negotiation conversation. No, it's. Yeah. I see that. It gets into like, a weird oh, well, do you do discounts or. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what if we like <laughs> do it just a hair smaller? Like, what if we, you know. Yeah. They start trying to nitpick things out to like. Just yeah. But you can always just go into it a lot better of like, okay, what's your budget? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if it's you all about like asking the right questions yeah, to it's all get them on, to see. It's all on our end of. Um, exactly. Asking the right questions from the get go, f asking people what their budget is or what they're wanting to spend yeah. and be able to design something for them that fits that budget while still giving them everything they want Yeah. to some extent. You mm -hmm. know, if they're asking for something super crazy, it's like, I can't do this within your budget. I can't even start this project yeah. within that budget, but I can steer them a different way. I'm like, <laughs> Hey, if we do it in this style like this, uh -huh. we can still do it this size. It's still what you're wanting. It's just not going to be in that exact style you want, but it's still everything you want. And it'll still look very amazing and very good. And it'll be a tattoo that's going to last a lifetime and you'll be happy and proud of it. I mean, that's the kind of tattoo artist I'd want to talk to. Like yeah. I would appreciate someone telling me that honesty instead of letting me go and just get a shitty tattoo. Yeah. And, <laughs> and even to that too, it's like we, if it's something I that's not in my wheelhouse, then we always guide them to someone that will take care of it yeah so you do probably have some relationships with other yeah. uh, tattoo shops in town that you can do that yeah so yeah. like when i was at all these other shops i've worked at over the years we had all these different artists there and we all specialized in different things and so if someone came in like oh hey i want this it was like okay yeah like go talk to go talk to yeah. this person right here in the shop they can definitely take care of you that's all that's what they do all the time and then opening up our own shop and it was very different where we had to reach out, huh? Like I started mm -hmm. reaching out to, cause I've known a lot of the other artists through in town, mm -hmm. but definitely it created more of a rapport with a lot of other artists at shops on being with, being on our own now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, yeah, if it's something out of my wheelhouse, I'm like, yeah, like go talk to this person or go talk to this person. They do this stuff all the time. Yeah. And I've gained a lot of client like 
repeat clientele from those same people, they're like, okay, yeah, yeah, you can't do this, but like, could you do these tattoos for me? I'm like, yeah. Like they're so much more appreciative of me just being honest with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they'll go get that tattoo from another person in that style. And then Come uh, back. all these other tattoos that they want, they know that's something I want to do or yeah. it's a style I enjoy doing. Then, yeah. Cool. So what do you classify your style as? Um, I do a lot of American traditional. I've already looked at your your stuff, yeah, but I mean, I'm for like, anyone who's for listening and can't <laughs> see right now. It's hard to say like uh, bright, colorful, black and gray. Um, so neo-traditional. Is that the more pinup girl style? The American classic one that you're saying? Like American traditional is, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of um, classic sailor looking tattoos. Mm-hmm. It's the best way to, I think that's probably yeah. the best way to put it. Yeah. Sailor tattoos. Yeah. Like old Navy tattoos, military tattoos. Yeah. And that's but, what you said you liked in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Like I've been doing that since that's awesome. pretty much the beginning of my career. Mm-hmm. Here and there, like it fade off and do other things. A lot of it. But I've always been very well-rounded and that comes down back to like working at a street shop and just doing whatever walks in the door. Mm-hmm. Um, that wasn't in town, was it? Was that the Salt Lake City? Yeah, that was out in Provo. Oh, okay. Got it. So do you need an actual license to tattoo in Idaho? Idaho, no. No. Sarah, we, we were talking to someone else and she mentioned that and I was like, that's crazy. So you, you can just pick up a tattoo gun and open a store and, or a shop. Yeah, it's very... make awful tattoos, definitely, but like <laughs> it's just crazy happens. that you don't need a license. Yeah, it's... Idaho is one of the few states that doesn't require any sort of licensing from anyone. Uh-huh. Um, That's nice for your business, I'm sure. I guess. <laughs> like, <laughs> one less thing to pay for, one a less bill thing to for. Pay for yes. yeah. But even then, like, I've been in places where, like, you still need licenses and all the crazy people that just buy stuff from eBay, Amazon, wherever are still opening up shops. Like they find the l- weird loopholes because hmm. a lot of licensing places don't care. And they have a license. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like you're paying the health department their fee and paying the city their fee. All right, cool. Yeah. Because it's technically, yeah, it's just that you're following protocol, right? Exactly. Not that you are because there's no licensed like, in any way. Yeah. Like there's no proper licensing like for an apprenticeship or yeah. a school that like you have this certification that you've yeah. got from the state yeah mm-hmm. and so which probably makes it easier is for people who aren't like real artists to hop on the band to do that it. yeah <laughs> like most of them don't stay around for very long um people catch on real quick they're like oh man what is this hot garbage that's that pretty tattoo? obviously bad like maybe they think it's cool but then all their friends tell them yo dude that sucks <laughs> Like that is, that's horrible. Who did that? Yeah. Have you noticed those people, um, offering like cheap pricing or free tattoos, kind of like things that business? hurt your business? Yeah. yeah. It doesn't though. No. It's not. So the quality shows. The quality shows. <laughs> <laughs> um, we don't want that cheap clientele. You it's know? not your client anyway. Like, no, it's not. Yeah. There's, cause I've tattooed every walk of life from convicts to doctors and lawyers and judges. Like, and everywhere in between, like, but it comes down to like what people want to spend, you know, like there's clientele that's super cheap. And there's the clientele that knows what they're getting mm-hmm. and is willing to wait and pay for things. And yeah. so the ones that only want to pay 20, 30 bucks, you don't want to waste your time. Like you tell them, really cheap. you yeah. tell them, you tell them a hundred dollars on something and they're going to try and talk you down. They're going to waste an hour's worth of your time yeah. trying to. Yeah. nickel and dime you and haggle you and uh-huh. it's like i could have made more money if i just didn't even bother talking to yeah, you yeah uh-huh. literally so you just but, wasted an hour of my time and <laughs> yeah. a lot of that comes down to too is like that's why just knowing your worth know your worth and don't don't settle mm-hmm. i feel there's more we talked about that earlier huh? no, i think that's great I, I i asked that question because with us in photography we get a lot of people who offer like free photo shoots or super cheap shoots you know 20 50 dollar shoots and the photos are terrible. They don't know what they're doing, but they're telling people they're photographers because they have a camera. Um, and it's just like enough of those people coming around, like really make it hard for us to like 
have a business, be a professional. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's like kind of what you said, like you don't want those customers and you don't. we realize that, but it's still like irritating at times <laughs> when is. you're like trying to do something and you're like, I'm like, that's you see that person offering it for free. And it's like, I know a, you're going to mess up the project. You're not going to nail the shots the client wants. You're lying to them. <laughs> like, and you're hurting my business. Yeah. So it's like for us in that way, it's like, it can be frustrating. It definitely oversaturates the market. And yeah. Things and it makes it, it makes it hard where you do have to like, try and up your own game to stand out, yeah. especially if you're still trying to build that clientele. Yeah. Um, but I guess knowing your worth is like what you just have to remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Like just trust the process. Like put, like, you know what you're worth. It's not, yeah. Like giving, giving free stuff away never works out. Like it definitely, I see like that. Cause it's like that with, I think a lot of different industries right now. Like not just tattooing, not just photography. Yeah. It's like mm -hmm. every industry has become very oversaturated with people, especially after like the last three years, probably, huh? Mm -hmm. Everything like when we it's got, a career shift and everything. Yeah, we, mm -hmm. we all got shut down. Like, oh, like our mm -hmm. job's not necessary. Like, what else can I do? Exactly. Mm -hmm. I think we all had some big epiphanies in life. Yep. Good and bad, you know, good and bad of things have happened. It was an awakening for sure. Yes. People have definitely changed career moves and found different ways to make money or try to make money. We're working uh -huh. on it. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know, I think we're all still working on it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, I think it's, it's hard sometimes that, that way of like trying to find your niche and stand out. So you've been tattooing for 18 years now. Yeah. What does the future look like for you? Do you plan on just like continuing to doing what you're doing? Yeah. Yeah. Is, um, not that you need to, but is there plans to grow Oracle? Or you just want to just keep being the best that you can be. Just go yeah. day by day. Like Keep it chill. Just keep it super chill how it Focus is. Focus on what you do. So yeah. it's just you two in the shop? Just us two, yeah. Nice. And it's like a very, it's a very wonderful dynamic. And you're a couple, so yep. that makes it nice and mm -hmm. chill. That's nice. It's been so nice. That's nice. Yeah. How long were you together before you opened the business? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Six, Five, six months. months, maybe. So that's a big thing to get into. Like yeah, you, make this commitment. Yeah. You, I'm sure well. you learned a lot so about still him. Still like each other during that time. <laughs> yeah. You don't hate each other now. No, great, good. Definitely not. It's it's been good. Like our relationships like blossomed even more. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like we were talking about this yesterday. Oh, we talk about it all the time. But like opening this shop up was like difficult to to some extent. You know, uh, nerve wracking of like oh, I don't know if I can do this. Yeah. Um, I've had those thoughts in the past of wanting to open my own shop and I'm like, oh, I don't know. And then because of the financial side, not even financial side, imposter just, syndrome. um, yes, I think that's mostly the what it came down syndrome. to is I don't think I have clientele. Yeah. Like what? I don't think I have clientele. My clientele is not going to follow me. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if I have clientele. And she's like, what are you talking about? Everybody knows you. I'm like, <laughs> okay, I guess. And, but we've been so busy. We just flourished. Are you two working together? That's what we were talking yeah. about. Yeah. Since you were able to take this step. And yeah. Like, like money-wise, time-wise, everything. Like, personal growth. I love health. it. Mm-hmm. Everything, yeah. So when you first opened up the doors at Oracle, did you have your clients come in right away? Or was there, like, a month yeah, where you were no, like, Ooh. like, no. Like, it hasn't slowed down one bit. Well, that's yeah. great. That was probably, like, a huge relief then. Oh, gosh. Like, even, like, the first week we were open, like, there was so many... Or from when we first announced it, huh? I bet people were so excited for you. Like any of your customers who have clients, got, other, I, other artists I've known forever that yeah. like I've talked to but never really talked to or reaching out like, uh -huh. dude, that's so awesome you're doing this. Yeah. Like, congrats. Like I probably want to so support much positive, you even more. Um it, yeah, so much positive influence from everyone and support. It's worked out so amazing. Yeah. And then yeah, like be on our own, like we're able to, I'm able to set my own hours now of how. Yeah. Are you free? I'm definitely You're way more free. free. Like, yeah. huh? So how, you, how we were just barely talking about this. And now it's. So you pretty much only go into the shop when you have appointments because you don't really do the whole walk-in thing anymore. Like we do walk-ins. If I'm there, if I already have an appointment and someone wants something and I still have time, like, yeah, I love doing it. Mm -hmm. um, but no, like we got kids i got family you know so yeah that's important like being a mm -hmm. husband and, and having our kids it's it's been so much nicer to have a better schedule 
Like yeah. I tattoo way earlier in the morning every day, and get done earlier. So I'm not staying there till late in the evenings now. Mm-hmm. And that's worked out wonderful where I get to spend time with my wife and kids every day after, yeah. after we close down shop for the day. Mm-hmm. That's the important part. Yeah. I think that was a part of the COVID shift. Yeah. Like we make more money. Good. Just finding like a and solid you're wasting, balance of it. not wasting time, like sitting yeah. there. You get your mm-hmm. life back and you can be with your family and kids. Yeah, like, it's new hobby. yeah. That's what it's about. It's true. Like I got hobbies now. Like I'm eating better now. I'm taking care of my body better. Like great. Cause tattooing is a little rough on the body. Yeah. Like horrible sometimes. I mean, it's, it takes a <laughs> yeah. lot of attention. I imagine and like just to sit there a for a long time and yeah. like the focus. Over. I know when we end a shoot that we've done like four hours of production, my brain is shot. Oh, like yeah, from trying definitely. to keep everyone together and make something happen. I'm like, I can't think I'm like, I'm done. done. So I can't imagine doing a piece that you're like, just hunched over, focused on for oh, six yeah. hours. You'll hyper focus so crazy sometimes that you don't know that three hours have passed. It's like watching a movie and you're all tense and then it ends and you're like, oh my God, I was just like. Yeah, I'll stand up and I'm like, oh, yeah. I don't know Crank. if I can actually stand up straight right now. Yeah. Like, I think I'm like stuck like a hunchback. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's good. You put in a lot of, it sounds like a lot of effort to get where you're at now yeah. and it's paying off. It definitely is. Like yeah. we opened the shop up and a lot of that too is I've had different moments where I, I was plateauing mm-hmm. and it's hard in any career. Like you always kind of plateau at times. Yeah. But the last plateau means Josie sat down and talked and we realized that that was the best choice is for us to go open shop up. Yeah. Or open our own shop up to like, Keep it fresh. Like further, my yeah. further, like my career, start her career. But we hadn't even talked about her tattooing at the time. She wanted to. We Just supporting you in the process. She didn't really tell me that yet. Mm-hmm. Like we had, she mentioned it kind of like more as a joke. And I'm like, okay. But <laughs> um, be able to like set that vibe that fit who I am more so and yeah. have it more. Oh, uh, what's the way? Um, and you're the boss. You get to make all the decisions. Yeah, like that's you don't have to check in with someone. Yeah, like setting yeah. our own hours, setting up our own vibe, making a shop f- yeah. look and feel how what what suits our needs. Yeah, and what suits the needs for the clientele that we've created or we've gained. Because mm-hmm. I feel like the most important thing is with tattooing. It really is. It's building that trust. Like, yes, thank you. And like making sure like any, every one of my clients feels seen and heard uh-huh. because all through life, I never really felt seen and heard. So that's what I wanted for all my clients is to always feel seen and heard. And to me, that's a big thing of like building that trust with people. Like yeah. you're allowing me to permanently mark your body for right. the rest of your life. Whether that's t- like you might pass 10 minutes after you walk out the door and get struck, you might live on. 80 years years older than me like i don't know and so that's just very beautiful thing i get to share with people of creating art for them and building that trust and that solid foundation to have that repeat clientele as well um but i've definitely noticed a huge shift of like when we open shop up of our clientele definitely feeling more comfortable and more like your relationship with the clients. Like they were much more open. You probably felt so much more invested being your own business. Like you you can't different shift, not do the best job ever because it's, it's your business. Well, see, this is funny too. It's like, like there's not much change of like working in another shop to having our own. Mm -hmm. Like there's some changes, but we were all, um, independent contractors. You were in a shop, you're an independent contractor you're doing all your own stuff, take care of like, in a sense, you're running your own small business with inside yeah. another business. And so with all that competition directly yeah, surrounding, you. Directly with surrounding you. you, but like it wasn't necessarily competition. Like they were always helping you out. Always. Yeah. We all, everyone in those shops, we always made sure everybody was taken care of still, mm-hmm. but be on our own. It's definitely a little different in that aspect, but a lot nicer, a lot more. Probably feels slower. It is. It's quiet now. That's been a huge change. Uh, is like, that nice? Yeah. yeah. It's so much nicer just like and... having a, almost a small private space for yourself to tattoo. Because um, our shop's still big and open, but our rooms are somewhat private. So clients still get to have that one-on-one conversation with you. 
and not feel like everyone's listening. Yeah. You're not as tense or anxiety-ridden because there's not all this stuff going around. Yeah, there's not a million things going on around you. I could see if I, if someone was used to tattoos that not being as overwhelming, but for someone newer to it, I mean, I remember when I walked into the when I got my first tattoo out, and I was oh, yeah. like, I was so nervous. I you didn't. don't know what he does, like, yeah. It's so it's very nerve wracking walking into a shop the first time. So like, that sounds nice it having don't you. Yeah, like you walk in our shop, it's very just chill, live atmosphere going on. Very, we're both very welcoming and open, and sit down, and explain whatever you need to explain. We, even if it's your first tattoo or your 50th tattoo it don't matter yeah mm -hmm. we still treat it the exact same and make sure you're very comfortable and aware of everything we're doing in that moment so you don't feel we, we try and help keep that anxiety way down low mm -hmm. <laughs> as much as possible for everyone and ease yeah. those nerves and that was a hard thing for me too like starting out i've always been very let's say social anxiety like very much social anxiety. I have a hard time talking to people. Uh -huh. Like even doing this, she's she like, you gotta do it. I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> well, she's like, you. yes, you Stepping are. out of your comfort zone <laughs> yeah. today. That's what she says. Uh -huh. It's okay. She always, I get it. She always gives me that slight push like, cause she knows I'll do it. Uh -huh. It's just giving me that but she slight, was not doing that it. slight <laughs> confident push out of the comfort zone. Um, but I noticed a huge shift in that too. Like maybe six, seven years into my career, I didn't talk to no one. Like sit down, not like sit down, shut up, but almost like people trying to talk to me and I'm like, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. You just didn't just continue the conversation. To someone for three hours and maybe say like 10 words. <laughs> but you could be someone's favorite person. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm, even back then, yeah, it's like, I the still silence. had that clientele that like knew I didn't talk and didn't care. Yeah. Yeah. But I noticed a huge difference once I started, once I like, it clicked to me that I had to talk to these people mm -hmm. no matter what and just keep that conversation going. Because you keep that conversation going with your clientele, you feel the anxiety leave their body. They're no longer eh, sweating bullets, trying to like wiggle on the table, all the weird nonsense. Yeah. Uh -huh. And you just keep them talking. Whether they don't want to, even if they don't want to talk, I'll just keep talking. I'll talk about the most random nonsense most of the time. Just because if I'm talking to them still too, if they're not talking, it's taking the focus off of whatever pain they're feeling or nerves they're yeah. feeling mm -hmm. and There's keeps the focus on the conversation. That. It's probably, There's I mean, a term. could you do that. that at the beginning? I know you said you're more, no. more quiet, but maybe it's a skill thing. Like, cause it was a learned skill. Yeah. It seems hard to talk like, in, I had to in pull tattoo. myself out of like mm -hmm. all sorts of anxiety. It was yeah. like, you have to act like you're the one you're like, you're in charge of the room. You're taking everything. Yeah, like, you're not scared. Not who We're I was. fine. Yeah. I'm like, eh, yeah, I'm scared like you really want to let me tattoo you? Like this is my thought process. I'm like, Okay, like I'm just like this shy little quiet kid. Yeah. But I wasn't. I just thought I was. Uh -huh. <laughs> but no, like that's been a huge change too now. Because, yeah, I started doing that years ago, of like talking to clientele and watching them change and building that rapport with them where we all, yeah, they definitely like, they, they leave knowing, feeling seen and heard. And that's a big thing to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. There's a lot of, like, there's so much trust that goes into it. And that's a huge thing that it don't matter if it's the tiniest little tattoo that's going to take 10 seconds or something that's going to take numerous settings. Like, yeah, you, have, you treat it all the exact same. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure everyone feels the exact same way and comfortable. Well, it's good that's even on your radar for thinking of that. Because, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I know we went into a few to even just talk about tattoos and they have not been that way always. Yeah, most they're most not always not that way. Like, yeah, had some be pretty short, and I'm like, all right, I just don't know if this is for me. I'm just okay. gonna leave now because exactly. you're like, you seem kind of annoyed by me asking if I I've, can. I've been to many shops that way. I'm like walking into shops out of town, this or that, and I'm like, like, do you have an appointment? And I'm like, I, I, I just want to see what you can do. I just, yeah, like, just want to see. I just like, want to look. Cool. Yeah. Like, bye. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, no. like, I hate that feeling. Uh -huh. Yeah. You walk into a store, if, like, I don't know. I don't want to walk into any store. Like, almost looked at like, why are you here? 100%. Why are you bothering me? Like, I know we've walked into random stores, me and Jesse together, and like, been treated like that. Like, they look is, up and ignore you. This is you. a department store, like, like what? <laughs> yeah. Why? And that's my biggest pet peeve. Like, yeah. you're the only person working here behind this counter. And you're like, deep coming, in conversation over there. <laughs> you're deep in conversation with your phone right now. Yeah. Like, I'm just trying to buy this. Like, yeah. all you have to do is just ring it out. Like, <laughs> yeah. and we'd end up leaving, like not even buying it. I'm like, 
cool. Let's find it a different story. I guess. That's me. Like, I'm like, I'm leaving. But you should never walk into a tattoo <laughs> shop feeling that way because here's something permanent that they're doing. Like, yeah. Uh-huh. You're not going to build a rapport or trust with someone like that. Like, no. Yeah. I don't want to give you, it comes back to that too. It's, this is a luxury service. Mm-hmm. I don't truly need this. I really want this. Mm-hmm. I don't need this. Mm-hmm. So it's like, if they don't want it's to, easier to say no once you get that like negative response. Yeah. Whereas you, if I'm on the fence about spending a thousand dollars on a, something, you might convince me to versus that other yeah. guy who's like, exactly. Out yeah. of here. So anyone else going into not necessarily just a tattoo business, but opening like their own business business in general. Yeah. Um, what would be one piece of advice that you would give? Yeah. Just do it. Take the plunge. Um, we were talking about this yesterday a little bit. How did you put it? Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. Um, it's better to take that chance and fail than always sit in the what ifs mm-hmm. and the wonders of like, well, what if I did that? Like, how would my life be? I'd rather fail and know. Yeah. Yeah. Like, cause it was a big gamble. I was so anxiety even mind opening the shop and I'm like, and just sit sat there like no babe like you got this like stop stressing about it this is going to work out very wonderful and if it doesn't well at least you tried and yeah. now you know yeah and we did and it's just worked out very well so do you think the biggest thing in starting your business was overcoming your own internal battles or yes. was it yeah 100 huh? so you think it potentially all- you may have opened that up earlier if you were able to like overcome that earlier i mean i know everything happens in life with time yeah, yeah. like there was a couple of times i think that i wanted to open my own shop prior uh-huh. and same thing it was like plateauing just like weren't there. ready like i'd get in my own head of like no i can't do this uh-huh. yeah like i just need to stay here and stay put but then it, we talked about doing it again and she really like made sure i had that slight push out of the comfort zone of like, no, you got this. It, it's been amazing because like even staying, like I don't feel like I've, I'm not going to plateau anymore now because there's so much more creative freedom um, work, working with my wife every day and like between doing art every day at the shop, doing art every day at home in our lives. Yeah. Like she's constantly painting murals now all the time and it's just so beautiful to be able to st- to talk about art and do art t- pretty much 24 seven now. Yeah. Like being, being married with her and like be able to like discuss all this at home, discuss it at work or just wherever it keeps those creative juices super flowing. Mm-hmm. Like where if one of us is having a slight off day, the other one, like, yeah. Carry gives, the other like, one. yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, no, like, what if we just do it like this? Like, what if you just do it like this, yeah. this and that? And it just re-pushes like that slight funk right out. Mm-hmm. And yeah, or like she'll just start painting something. I'm like, I'll be just goofing off, doing whatever. I'm like, oh, okay, now I want to make something. Yeah. Like watching her do like some art project, I'm like, okay, cool. Now I want to go make something too. So are your kids pretty creative? <laughs> it's definitely a... Yeah. It's a definitely a healthy, healthy competition. It's, <laughs> it's been fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. So our kids are creative in their own crazy little ways. Huh? Yeah. Any tattoos yet? You say you have a 19 year old? Do they yeah. have? He's got three tattoos now. Yeah. Yep. Any interest in becoming a no. apprentice no. for you? No. <laughs> you won't teach him. No. No. <laughs> no, not at all. That's... Teach him all Don't the wrong things. Ideas. Yeah. <laughs> I think we've been button heads too much to try and teach him. <laughs> yeah you? keep family and business separate yeah for that except sense. your wife yeah except <laughs> your wife that one works out well yeah. that one works that out that one works out very mm-hmm. well yeah her in. But that, that was what someone else on the podcast said once mm-hmm. that, that yeah, was their Candy piece said, of the business advice yep she was like your business partner needs to be someone you sleep with she was like i'm sorry because <laughs> you can have like, the tough conversations the problems. yeah it's like, true it, yeah well i think i was talking something about that the other day not in that sense but just like <laughs> way back when like i think we were talking about it um, way back when it was always a husband wife duo on mm-hmm. a business project mm-hmm. like a lot of the times like the husband would be doing whatever business he was doing whether it was construction or whatever mm-hmm. the wives were always running the, the back end of the business that yeah. no one knew mm-hmm. they were running all the books that they were making grandma, all the appointments the 
Exactly. Mm-hmm. They knew the ins and outs of that business. Yeah. And that's why those businesses always worked out very well. Because mm-hmm. it wasn't just like, I think that's the thing. You can't run a business by yourself. It is almost impossible. It can be done. Yes. It's a lot of work. But it's a whole lot more work and yeah. stress. And you're not going to go near as far as you would with the team. No. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. So having like my wife like run the business with me, it makes things a whole lot less stressful. Like knowing I don't have to do all this by myself. Like mm-hmm. if, if something's overwhelming me, like, hey, can you take care of this for me? Yeah. Why sure. I go take care of this. For sure. And nothing feels stressful. I think that's the other thing too, like running a business. Like I was worried about like some of the nuances of like owning our own business. But then thinking back to like, wait, I've been an independent contractor this whole time. Mm-hmm. For like You've been 18, doing this. Yeah. It's just literally a piece of paper now that says yeah. you own your You're the yeah, head it guy. Just, it just yeah. change change of location, I guess. Mm-hmm. Change of view. Mm-hmm. And a couple extra bills. But mm-hmm. other than that, like nothing it's worth it. Like business end of the aspect of like running things didn't change. Yeah. Like I was already doing all the other work beforehand. Funny thing, you mm-hmm. just got better. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, this is now you do it my way and just no, not my way is any better. It's just, it's just <laughs> and from all your experience, how my brain works. Yeah, you, know? yeah, you like, learned like all the things you don't like. Exactly. Like I don't like doing things this way or that way. And I'm not talking bad about any other place because mm-hmm. yeah. it works for them. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, like, they're still all in business too. Like yeah. it's Teach been working. Their own. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So whatever works for you works for you. It's how yeah. you're comfortable running things and um, doing stuff how you want to do it. Yeah. Well, I like that answer. Yeah. Yeah. Just, but yeah, like if you're gonna open your own business, just do it. Mm-hmm. Don't. Don't be scared. Just do it. Don't get in your head. Yeah, stay out of your head. It's so easy to get in your head. Oh, gosh, it's so easy to get in your head. And it never goes well. Yeah, I was going to say You never go in your head and come out with like, oh, this is a great thought. Like, it's just, you spiral down. I come out with a thousand reasons why I shouldn't do it. Uh Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Not like, maybe like two or three why, and then a thousand why I should not. Yeah. 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 And like 5,000 different possibilities of how, how each one of those happen. go. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yep. Whenever that spiral starts, starts, I just have to like stop myself and be like, literally be like, okay, like, say something out loud. I just really <laughs> kind of learned how to do that. Like, yeah. Get out of your Within head. the last year, huh? Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much yeah. for yeah, coming on our guys. podcast this has today been so fun. and getting out of your element. Yeah. Talking into a microphone. <laughs> I knew like, yeah, I knew the first couple of minutes to be like, uh, and then. That's how it I, And then I just it. forget. It's just like anytime I'm tattooing, like. Yeah. Yeah. That first initial part of trying to talk to someone, especially if it's a brand new client, I've never met them. Yeah. This or that, like, it's definitely that. You never that know. slight awkward for a moment, <laughs> but not awkward. Uh huh. Yeah. It's just finding the balance. Yeah. Finding out what you can like. Yeah. Communicate. What can we really talk yeah. about? How far can we push this crazy conversation? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was awesome talking to you. You're the first yeah. tattoo artist we've had on here, so awesome. that yeah. was really fun to hear. Yeah. Um, and so check out Oracle Tattoo in Oracle Ammon. Oracle Tattoo in Ammon, yes. And right. you can find them on socials. You What's your on, website? Yeah, oraclettattoos.com. Okay. And then our Instagram and Facebook are both Oracle Tattoo 208. Okay. All right. Great. Awesome. Well, thank you yeah, so thank you guys. much. Okay. All right. right. Thanks, Kenny. Appreciate Bye. it. Bye. Bye. Bye.